Hello and welcome back everybody to the Food Build Factory where today we're going to take a look at the Zeton Invader Mark II and holy hell am I glad that finally this build is coming to fruition. So let's get right into it. What this character is going to be about maybe and the chance is actually pretty good because it's one of my better performing videos so far. Um, you have seen one of my older videos, which was the Zeton Invader. In that video, I just wanted to try to make a role-playing build, kind of recreating a Zeton, uh, the aliens that finally arrived in uh, Fallout 76 with the Invaders from Beyond event. And now really is the time to revisit this build. It's something I wanted to do for quite a while. Um, so for those of you who don't know, back when I did that video, um, there basically weren't any uh, legendary alien blasters to begin with, uh, with the exception of the one that you got from um, from a quest line, which was a medics version that I was using in the in the game, uh, in the video. And uh, it was pretty solid, it had the, the necessary perks that I still am looking for, better vats creates, less vats costs and so on, um, but other than that, um, the alien blaster was suffering from quite a lot of flaws. So it wasn't really doing a lot of damage, the projectiles aren't hit scan, so that's always a little bit of a drawback. Uh, I mean it's not as as bad anymore once you're considering vets. And yeah, alien uh, energy weapons in, in general were pretty trash. We didn't even have access to legendary perks back at the time. And um, I wanted to revisit this build for a few times at this point, but every time I wanted to do it or uh, revisit it, um, there were news that new stuff was coming, like, um, as I said, the Alien Blasters could be legendary now, then we had legendary perks and so on. And now I think we really are in a good spot to finally do revisit this guy. Um, the reason is, nowadays it's a really good weapon, finally. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's the best pistol in the game, but really for, especially if you want to go for a stealth route, there's nothing holding you back anymore. Uh, in fact, I do greatly enjoy all the new uh, alien weapons. Luckily enough, we actually have aliens here, which is kind of a cool thing. I didn't really plan, it's a random encounter. And <coughs> those guys can be a little bit tanky. Now, one thing I did notice and I wanted to touch upon, um, these guys are very uh, perceptive, by the way. So we are a really sneaky character, but these guys immediately saw us, which is a little bit of a, of a problem for us because we actually rely heavily on stealth so this is a bit of a tougher fight but we can just mech dump these guys uh, pretty pretty solid no big deal here in fact we can heal ourselves very fast um, due to alien technology and stuff which not really but you get the point and yeah even that encounter was over pretty quickly if you have encountered these guys before they can actually be quite a threat um, unless you have a super overpowered character it is, but overall I think it turned out pretty well. Here we have some rats, which shouldn't be too much of a, of a problem. And yeah, getting back to the weapon, um, I'm enjoying all of the of the new alien weapons a lot. Um, I think Bethesda actually did a great job with them, also with balancing, uh, not just introducing new weapons that are all of a sudden the best of the best, uh, which I know a lot of people kind of dislike um, whenever there's new weapon people want them to be super overpowered and exceed in every single situation which I'm not a big fan of because think about it where does it lead us um, every time Bethesda announces new weapons it basically makes others redundant and I think uh, they, they really did a good job and furthermore visually they did a perfect job um, in fact, we're now playing for in first person for a little while, just so we can admire this beauty. Um, something I've done from basically the day uh, Fallout 76 dropped, I always liked how the weapon looked. Um, really cool, I really liked the style, and I was so glad to finally have fun with this weapon, really. Now, another big drawback, which um, I failed to, to recognize or um, talk about in my Zeton Invader video, was the fact that the alien blaster, while it was a stealthy weapon, which is very, very good, um, it didn't really gain any benefit from stealth attacks. So you got the benefit of not being hit all of the time, which is nice, but um, it didn't get any damage boost from covered operative and so on. This seems to be fixed. Um, I, you guys know me, I don't do any scientific testing or so. 
Um, by the way, I'm just looking for the Scorch Beast, uh, which usually is a little bit easier. But <clears throat> today I kind of... there it is. Um, yeah, it, it seems to work, but as I said, uh, my testing method usually isn't too scientific. And it seems like the server is a little bit laggy. I'm promising you that this build is actually pretty stealthy usually. But for some reason I'm getting detected a lot here. Um, luckily with... Um, uh, with... how's it called? God damn it! I'm a little bit out of Fallout 76 at the moment because I'm playing a lot of uh, Elden Ring, as you can imagine. Um, <coughs> God damn it! Am I stupid now? Uh, escape artist. Sorry. Uh, luckily, due to escape artist being detected, isn't the biggest uh, turn off in the world because we can actually get back into stealth pretty easily. And here you can see, even with tankier enemies nowadays, we can actually do quite some uh, damage. Um, combination of the the weapon nowadays with the energy buff and so on doing relatively good damage to begin with and the fact that uh, we can actually pump out a lot of shots the fire rate is crazy uh, a lot of people are a bit upset that there still isn't a uh, automatic version of the alien blaster which I'm not really thinking too harshly about for the simple reason that you can actually fire this thing as fast as you can pull the trigger basically and the only real thing I noticed is, um, ever since the latest update, I, for the first time, really have a little bit of a problem with uh, rubber banding, which is something people have complained for ages in this game, and I never really had a big problem with, um, funnily enough, up until this point where they said they actually addressed it. So, um, that's something to take note of. Um, it, keep in mind, I am only playing with energy weapons lately, just because, finally, I can enjoy that. So it, I guess it has something to do with the fact that they now are uh, working differently. But s still, it's it's not bad. You can actually overcome that rubber bending pretty easily. I haven't encountered a single enemy that was flat out not dying. But yeah, as you saw there, it might need a little bit of mag dumping, a lot of shots, but um, we can actually take down even the tougher enemies pretty easily. Um, so yeah, back in the day, this fight, like against the legendary Scorch Beast, would have been a nightmare uh, with the with the alien blaster, and yeah, I greatly enjoy it. Now, one interesting thing is, despite the fact that nowadays um, cover operative and sneak attacks in general seem to work with the weapon, one thing that doesn't seem to work, and I'm not quite sure uh, about it, is the follow through perk which should be a massive buff uh, to every sneak character, as you can imagine, you know, provided you do use um, ranged attacks, by the way. But, yeah, it seems to not work all that well. Now, one thing you... Uh, I did have included it in the build still, just because I hope it's a bug and will be addressed in the near future, but... I mean, it should theoretically work sooner or later, but... Um, as it stands at the moment, it seems to not do a great job. That's all I'm saying. Um, I maybe maybe it's a it's a problem with the damage numbers. I can't really tell. Overall, when I was fighting tougher enemies, I still had the feeling that I was taking them down faster with far-flung fireworks. It just wasn't really represented in the. Let's take out the assault drone dominator. That was the more important part here because this guy will shred us apart. We are actually a very flimsy character, <coughs> so we really rely on our stealth abilities, which for the most part is no problem whatsoever. And But yeah, as you saw there, once we do zero in on our target, nothing can withstand the power re for a really long time. You can actually put out a lot of DPS in a short amount of time now. Um, when it comes to modifications, I have all the stuff on it, like the, the scope, long barrel, sharpshooter script, and so on. But the more interesting part probably is the newly added uh, receiver types. So for those of you who don't know, the <coughs> receiver types we do have, or at least I have, I'm pretty sure that's all of them, uh, is cryo, poison, then we do have the fusion mech, which we had for all of the time, and the standard modification. Now, with the exception of the fusion mech, which makes sense, uh, all of the other magazines do uh, use alien blaster cells, which nowadays, that's another big thing I missed to uh, say earlier. Yeah, back when I made the Zeton Invader, 
using alien blaster rounds and therefore the more powerful magazine was basically a no-go for the simple reason that you could only farm very limited amounts of them you couldn't craft them so that was another big downside to the weapon which nowadays is no problem whatsoever you can just craft them like any other um, uh, any other uh, ammo type and it's actually not even all that expensive it's pretty on par with all the other energy weapons in my eyes it was pretty efficient to craft it so yeah with ammo smith rank 3 uh, sorry ammo factory rank 3 ammo smith maxed out and um, super duper but that doesn't uh, change the amount I was crafting like 60 rounds in a single go and it was just uh, like six copper six steel and a little bit of plastic or something like that so yeah one thing you really gotta get into when it comes to um, using the weapon due to the fact that the projectiles are very slow which isn't really a problem in vets because they do hit regardless you you kind of have to learn how many shots um, individual enemies take because if you're just start firing and stop when the enemy is dead you're probably wasting like twice the amount of shots you would have needed otherwise um, due to the fact that yeah the enemy drops dead while like five projectiles are still on the way um, I guess a lot of people could probably have a problem with that um, for me personally I don't really mind it I actually like um, the that the weapon behaves a little bit different um, sure it isn't in, in terms of effectiveness it's a little bit of a drawback but I think it gives the the weapon or basically the alien weapons in general uh, a little bit of a unique flavor to it which I really like I, I just think in terms of gameplay this is such a fun uh, weapon nowadays and I really enjoy it now we were talking about the receivers and the one I am using which is probably the one you see most people use if they talk about the weapon is the cryo receiver uh, for the simple reason that it does on paper the most damage now you do have another good option uh, which is the poison receiver and that's something I was a little bit surprised by because usually poison in this game is really underwhelming uh, due to the fact that uh, when they added poison damage to weapons back at the time there wasn't really a thing like poison resistance so uh, it did relatively little damage because it rarely stacked but it, it was okay nowadays though most of the enemies uh, uh, the higher level enemies which are at a certain point all enemies you will encounter uh, do have like 200 <coughs> uh, poison resistance in fact you can actually see that when I'm targeting enemies I'm not really talking about it a lot but uh, as a rare occasion I do actually have awareness as a perk so you can see the resistances of the enemies so you will see a lot of enemies have poison resistance however I still found using the poison receiver on the on the alien blaster was working actually pretty well it's not like you have a lot of damage over time but overall it seemed like the poison damage was just adding to the overall damage of the weapon and therefore I had a lot of fun with it um, the simple reason I went with the cryo receiver still here is I think in the long run it gives the better benefits when you're fighting tougher targets that take a lot of shots like the scorch beast or so um, you will see that you have the chance to actually freeze them and slow them down which is obviously a very nice thing and in addition to that you're just doing a little bit more damage now when it comes to the alien disintegrator uh, which will definitely uh, be integrated into the next build um, I actually am tempted more to use the poison receiver for the simple reason that it visually changes the weapon a lot which I like uh, I think it's visually the best looking alien disintegrator uh, with the poison receiver and uh, damage reduction is relatively ne negligible um, however on the on the alien disintegrator there's better options but we will get to that when we're talking about that build in particular um, anyways uh, on yeah on on the on the alien receiver sorry alien blaster it doesn't really change the visuals of the of the weapon no matter which receiver you do attach and the only change is to the projectiles themselves but they do this weird thing that you probably know from the Gatling Plasma where the projectiles have a green color but on impact they revert back to their kind of basic blue one and it, it looks a little bit weird to be honest I don't like it too much that's really nitpicky and probably very 
standard for this character for this channel here where it's all about st form of a function basically but yeah on, on a rare occasion we actually went for the best receiver in terms of performance just because I enjoyed it and didn't really see any visual benefit to using other receivers now this guy here was detecting us pretty fast so not quite sure what's up there but let's just get back into stealth and find the I, w I wanted to say missing link but these guys are not really the missing link they are the missing links retarded brother or something like that so yeah anyways you may notice that I'm not talking a lot about of the actual efficiency of the weapon because I think it kind of speaks for itself I'm so glad that finally it is a great weapon I really am enjoying, am enjoying my time with it a lot um, it's a very straightforward stealth character usually um, the only interesting things here I did was I wanted to go for a little bit more intelligence than I usually do which kind of is, is kind of obvious I guess we're talking about a really advanced space civilization I wanted to make this character pretty intelligent and yeah other than that we do have um, basically invested into the standard stuff that you might expect on a character like this so perception agility and luck are basically our main stats now the more interesting part maybe is that usually when I'm going for a gunslinger I am not too heavily invested into uh, into perception for the simple reason that there isn't a whole lot of perks that are really useful to us uh, on this occasion though I went for two perks that aren't really necessary just to get my my perception up to 13 so I have a little bit of a better bets hit chance so yeah anyways I hope we're done here usually I'm, I'm forgetting a few few guys here but there's one level 100 super mutant dog but that shouldn't be a problem now that we actually have the time where is he uh, we can actually see how many shots we will take but I guess it's like two or three shots which really isn't a lot considering how fast we can dish out these shots and starting off with a crit another one and on the third shot thanks to executioners which we have on the weapon this guy is down so you saw there uh, also you saw there that yeah we are refilling our critical meter within two shots which is pretty standard uh, unless you're running with a very very high luck build or a very specialized combination of high luck and um, critical savvy so yeah I think with these guys now we should be done also I really like how whoops silly uh, how the, the projectiles actually can track your target in VATS. I think that's really cool. I, uh, one time we saw that really, really well was when we were fighting a Scorch Beast, uh, where we were shooting up and they had a really steep arc um, onto the enemy. Not quite sure why there are so many of these guys today and where they are coming from, but yeah. Anyways, so I think now we are finally done and since in the beginning of the video we were taking a look at our guy here in the night uh, maybe we should take another look at her him it it's an it it's a Zedon so yeah in terms of the visuals it's kinda hard to make a Zedon but I think yeah the point comes across right so anyways I hope you enjoyed the gameplay part of the video so far and now we're going to take a look at the perks mutations and everything else starting off with our mutations we do have Adrenal Reaction here, Bird Bones, Eagle Eyes, Egghead, Marsupial and Speed Demon. So the only real hit or miss perk here, uh, mutation here is Adrenal Reaction, uh, which gives us extra weapon damage when we are at lower health. Uh, the reason it's here, it's a leftover from another build and it didn't really hurt us because in fact we are a very squishy character. As I said during the video, we're trying to avoid damage overall just so, yeah, therefore a hit to our maximum HP isn't really any concern to us to begin with but we can have a little bit of a benefit from it usually we try to stay at full health but in tougher fights you can easily let some damage um, stack up so you are at like 60-40% health or so and don't have to react immediately we do have a fail safe Sorry, we do have a failsafe active so that we don't really have to worry about winning one shot all the time and therefore we can easily get away with it and there's another one 
Holy hell. Where are these reinforcements coming from? Alright. So, yeah. Adrenal reaction, hit or miss. I think it's, it's not something I have to talk a lot about. Um, then we do have the standard contesters for a VATS build, Bird Bones and Eagle Eyes. I mean, there's never a good situation where you wouldn't want to use them. Just because, yeah. Extra agility. On this occasion, we double down on this um, for better stealthiness. Which is actually pretty good because we have very high stealth. Uh, sorry, high, very high agility for a non-bloody build. A uh, non-low health build. So, yeah. Extra agility means more stealth, it means we have a little bit more action points to use in VATS, which is also nice, given that we are primarily using VATS. And Eagle Eyes, yeah, a little bit more perception yet, means a little bit better hit chance, and more crit damage is also pretty nice, considering we always trying to get a crit out as soon as we get it. Then we do have Egghead, which just doubles down on the idea that we want to have a bit more of an intelligent character for once, which is very nice for leveling. Um, it's by no means in the realms of power leveling or something like that, but I will take a look at the special stats in a few seconds, uh, which usually I don't really do, but on this occasion I think it's a little bit more interesting. Then we do have Marsupial and Speed Demon, and these are just the uh, most average mutations you will pretty much see on every single character. More jump height, faster movement speed, these are universally good just to move around Appalachia, make stuff so much easier, and yeah, that's basically it. A little bit more carry weight doesn't hurt, but in fact carry weight is not really our strong suit on this character, as you can imagine. And lastly, we do have a little bit more reload speed, which is obviously always a plus side when we are using um, stuff like ranged weapons. So therefore, yeah, <coughs> that's the choices when it comes to <coughs> sorry, when it comes to our mutations. Taking a look at the special stats, you can see there, unsurprisingly, we do have strength one, uh, which on this occasion happens just because we also we do only have strength one um, or in fact I think we do have strength three but yeah the debuffs no matter how much we invest into class freak or so we just have to live with strength one perception is at 20 which is pretty nice I mean you can obviously pump that up with stuff like uh, big uh, sorry special uh, blend tea sweet water special blend tea sorry was a little bit harsh here um, then we do have endurance which is also at one uh, so these are definitely our dumb stats, strength and endurance. So we are basically a glass cannon. On top of that we do have charisma only at 2, which is also pretty rare, but I'm going over that in a second. Then we do have intelligence, which is at 16. And this was the first one I was talking about. Yeah, uh, As I said, not in the realms of power leveling or anything, but for a day-to-day -day build it's actually pretty solid intelligence stats, so you can level up pretty fast. And this here is basically our main stat. Agility at 27, really nice. And lastly, we do have luck at 17. Uh, luck 15 is basically all you need. Everything more. It doesn't really change the character a lot, but it just happened to be there. That being said, we're now going to take a look at our equipment. And here it is, the, basically the most important thing about this build. And probably the one you all came to see here. And what we are using is an Executioner's Vets Hit Chance Let's Vets Cost Alien Blaster. So we have, as I said, the Long Barrel, Sharpshooter Grip and Short Scope. Just to max this thing out. In terms of the scope, you could definitely get away without it. Especially on this occasion, having relatively high perception coupled with the vets hit chance effect I think it would make it a little bit more AP efficient to use it without the scope however I didn't really test it and if there is a difference it's not too great so I just wanted to have it for visual reasons because this is how a alien blaster should look right and yeah then we have the cryo mag I already talked about that in detail during the video and when it comes to the effects I thought that obviously the second and last effect had to be vets related, there's just no way around it. So yeah, less vets cost was actually the one I was keen on the most. Like this was the first one I said in stone where I said I want to have an alien blaster to use in this video with less vets action point cost just to make it more efficient. It is rather efficient to begin with but yeah, less vets cost really helps. As for the second effect, I would have been very happy with Vets crits uh, doing more damage, which I have on another alien blaster that I thought about using during the video. But lastly, I did have a little bit more fun with Vets hit chance. Ultimately, damage isn't really the problem with this weapon anymore, gladly. So I found that having extra Vets hit chance made for a more satisfying gameplay. 
and it makes it so basically you can really rely on counting shots like for example two to three shots for a ghoul four to five shots for a super mutant and you can just dish them out and wait for for the execution to happen uh, like a second later or so it, it's really it's a bit hard to explain but it is a lot of fun once you're getting used to it and speaking about it we do have executioners so this was one of these um, weapons where pretty much everything is good I mean you you know the usual contesters like executioners and the armor bloodied and so on these are aristocrats and these are basically your choices now one I found pretty interesting which I actually have on my live servers uh, which is a furious weapon, it's kind of fun here, um, obviously it's a bit of a waste when it comes to most enemies like ghouls and so on, but due to the fact that this is a weapon that takes down enemies with multiple projectiles, um, furious is actually pretty good on the weapon. Uh, Anti-armor I was obviously very tempted by, but I wanted to t uh, actually step back from anti-armor for the simple reason that um, Nowadays, finally, on energy weapons, we don't necessarily need anti-armor anymore because nowadays the armor penetration works well and I thought that showcasing the weapon with anti-armor effect would not really showcase the difference we do have nowadays. So, yeah, executioners it was and I think it couples very well. Yet again, due to the fact that we do have multiple small damage numbers, um, that's always a nice thing for executioners to really get the most out of it and for some reason it just worked exceptionally well so for the most part I was playing with an aristocrats version of the weapon and it was doing a great job it was a lot of fun but with the executioners effect I actually had a little bit more fun even against tougher targets like behemoths and so on and yeah was a lot about talk about the weapon here but um, yeah I overall uh, I'm just really impressed I really like the alien blaster nowadays it's rapidly became one of my favorite weapons in the game and in terms of damage it doesn't look too impressive let's let's be honest here like 45 energy damage and 33 uh, frost damage that's not something you would look at and say like oh yeah that's a hot contester for a good weapon but it actually is the fire rate 100 is kind of here or there I mean it doesn't really tell us a lot because to be honest I mean it may be a little bit different on PC where you can click a little faster but when it comes to the controller I'm using like as fast as I'm pushing the trigger or pulling the, the R2 button um, the weapon fires so fire rate doesn't really tell us a lot here it's just depending on how fast you can push the button honestly range of 204 is pretty solid it's not the best range in the world but for our means it's very very good and accuracy 85 is also pretty solid and all of that comes with a weight of 2.24 never the most important thing in the world but having such a lightweight weapon that packs such a punch is really a nice thing to have and I really am glad for yeah the weapon being so good nowadays I mean I said that like five times now but yeah last thing I wanted to talk about is condition uh, pretty solid I didn't really have a problem with it I do use uh, do run gunsmith which I r do very often um, so that's just a thing on my channel I'm just saying stuff like that by the way because I think this could be one of the weapons where a lot of non subscribers uh, might take a look at the video so yeah keep in mind we do have gunsmith on but we lost like 40% um, condition on the weapon during the video which is okay considering how many shots we took in my eyes and lastly the most important thing probably is um, the ammo efficiency is actually pretty solid so we started the video with around 1800 shots so overall we burned through like six to seven hundred shots which in my eyes is, is a pretty good good amount like not too crazy to be honest it, it's actually very manageable to keep up with the ammo consumption of this thing that being said, we're now going to take a look at our armor and uh, one thing you will probably notice very early on is that all of it is level 10 and that's for no specific reason. The only reason it happened is because I initially intended to make this build a berserker just because it's an easy way to push your damage up uh, on a stealth build where it doesn't really matter to begin with. So the idea was to get a chameleon set of light metal armor and let it break now obviously at the point where it's broken it wouldn't really make a difference if it's level 50 or so it just makes it so yeah at level 10 they break faster making the process easier but during working on the character I 
I did change the idea to not make a Berserker's character anymore and I didn't really want to craft a whole new set and go through the process of re-rolling it until I have a chameleon set again just to have a little bit more damage resistance which ultimately doesn't do a whole lot so long story short the only thing that matters when it comes to armor is our effects here and I wanted to have a full set of chameleon and two pieces of AP refresh obviously um, more pieces would be nice. We actually have no, no room in our perks for uh, action point refresh. For the most part, you can get away even without any action point refresh just because of Grim Reaper Sprint and the ammo, uh, the action point efficiency of the weapon. But having two pieces of powered gear here saved my ass on a lot of situations, especially when we we're fighting tougher targets. For the rest, there's nothing too interesting here, like mix match stuff, really. I, I didn't really look out for, for more interesting stuff. Um, the only thing I might touch upon is, on the arms I have ultralight, on the legs I have muffled, and on the chest I do have dense, so I don't have to invest more into uh, fireproof when it comes to our endurance stat. And that's basically it, obviously all of it is shadowed, so yeah. Not a lot to talk here, and when it comes to our apparel uh, we do have shield road ladders obviously that's not something that screams ooh alien tech or something but we don't really see it so it didn't matter whatsoever for me at least and yeah we do have a little bit more perception a little bit more agility and a little bit more luck every single stat we can definitely make use out of so yeah that's why this is here uh, we do have a jetpack uh, sorry not a jetpack we do have a backpack um, which I disabled in the settings menu, which is a really nice implementation to the game. Uh, the only thing I found a little bit odd is that they made it a setting you have to switch on or off rather than just a modification to the weapon. Um, that's a little bit weird to me, but ultimately doesn't really matter too much. Um, we have a spacesuit, welding goggles and a rep cap really when it comes to the visuals of this character it's mainly carried by how ugly you can make your character look. So yeah. That's all I'm saying about the, the items. I think there's nothing really left to say for me. Um, if you have a question, obviously feel free to ask for. And now we're going to take a look at our perks. Here we do have it. Strength 3 with blocker at rank 3. Um, this is just useful for the rare situations where we get detected by something like a mutant hound or so. And he gets a bite in. Due to the fact that we are so squishy, actually one or two bites from a, from a mutant hound would mean that we are basically done with and blocker can really help in these situations now it's for 95 percent of your playtime it's going to be dead weight but there are or will be situations where you are happy to have blocker equipped it just gives you this second more to react jump away take a stim pack run away and regain stealth so that's why blocker is here other than that we don't really need anything we don't need bandolier or so because we only carry energy ammo then we do have perception and really the only two perks you definitely need on this occasion are concentrated fire and tank killer. Concentrated fire is really great on this weapon because it is classed as a semi-automatic weapon so you really get that uh, 15 or 25% um, accuracy bonus after every single shot and on top of that you can fire so rapidly so you can really within even if you had no perception whatsoever other than the three required for concentrated fire uh, within three to four shots, which shouldn't take you more than a second, you can basically be up to 95% accuracy. So that's really a very, very nice perk on this occasion. It's definitely quality of life, but overall, yeah, it will make you more ammo efficient and it makes the whole weapon more satisfying to use. Tank killer, obviously a little bit more armor penetration is nice. Now, nowadays we don't need armor penetration as much as we needed it before but it does work more effectively and just gives us more damage the stagger chance is nice um, 9% chance doesn't sound like a lot should be a lot on considering the fire rate we do have but ultimately I found that it wasn't too necessary or doing a whole lot for us to be honest the little staggers that come in every now and then are nothing compared to the effect of the cryomag on this weapon so we are really using tank killer for more damage due to more armor penetration. And then, because I wanted to have more perception, and since we are making a Zedan character, 
I wanted to take a little bit more odd perks. Now, uh, the one thing you will every now and then see on my Gunslinger characters is Glow Sight. It's a very situational perk, but in situations where it is useful, it's very useful. And it's just always a good decision if you want to pump a little bit more into perception, but don't know where to put it. Glow Sight is never a bad decision. Uh, there are certain events where it's very good, like um, Radiation Rumble, for example. And then we do have stuff like Awareness. It's never really an important perk, um, to be honest, especially if you're not considering switching between various weapons, uh, which on this occasion you won't do because you're not going to carry a ballistic weapon. So awareness only really adds a little bit to you. I personally like it just because it gives your character a little bit more of this uh, advanced feeling, basically, uh, knowing the specific details about a character just from um, targeting him in bats. As I said, it doesn't add anything to the to damage of the build or anything like that, but I wanted to have it here just to give me a little bit more of an advanced feeling. And lastly we do have Night Eyes, which I found pretty fitting with this character. Now this is one of the perks pretty much no one ever uses because it actually is pretty bad at doing what it's supposed to do, meaning uh, between 6pm and 6am it gives you night vision, but the night vision is basically just a blurry filter. A lot of people don't really like it. I do enjoy it sometimes because it's a very distinct difference to a character. That's about it though, and yeah, I thought it was a rather fitting to a advanced alien character having something like night vision, but that's neither here nor there. So keep in mind, um, if you want to recreate this and maybe you don't have access to a lot of legendary perks, um, in Perception there's basically 6-7 points that you can just ditch out and won't miss, it won't make too much of a difference on the character, especially if you're also using a Vets Hit Chance um, weapon. So yeah, that's basically where you can draw your points from and that's it. Then we do have Endurance which is also at 3, just like Strength, and we do have Adamantium Skeleton. Uh, the simple reason here is that even if you are in stealth, you will every now and then get hit from a few stray bullets. That's just part of the game, to be honest. Um, people fire in your general direction. And yeah, every now and then you will take a little bit of damage. And what's really frustrating is if one of your limbs is broken, I'm pretty sure it's about all limbs, but especially the legs, you will get into this little animation for a short period of time. And that means you stand up and lose your stealth ability very easily. So that can be very frustrating you're staggered in that situation and you can be overwhelmed within a few seconds which can actually be quite frustrating as I said so adamantium skeleton was a must-have for me on this occasion and usually I do also include fireproof as a must-have in every single build but on this occasion I actually just went through and used the dense chest piece so yeah there's that then do we do have charisma and what you usually see on my characters here is either Lone Wanderer, Tenderizer, or a combination of both of them, just because these are universally good, considering you are solo, obviously, when it comes to Lone Wanderer. And yeah, there's pretty much never a good reason to use Tenderizer, uh, to not use Tenderizer. However, um, on this occasion, I actually just wanted to make a bit more of a different character, and I felt like, yeah, the weapon is powerful enough so that I didn't feel like I was actually needing Tenderizer, and that was so satisfying that I went through with it. In terms of um, Lone Wanderer, obviously the AP refresh would have been really nice for this character, but since I already didn't really have points for Action Boy or so, I found that yeah, I wanted to really rely just on my armor to refresh my action points for me and just go with a very different approach to Charisma here and just use Field Surgeon, because after all we are really flimsy, but due to the combination of Field Surgeon and First Aid, which you see in the Intelligence stat, we can actually, if we survive a hit, we can just heal it off very easily and be very efficient with our stim packs, which I found rather fitting, yes, yet again. Um, very good and advanced healing is something I can imagine such a squishy race of aliens would have. You see there is a lot of headcanon involved with this build, but I enjoyed it heavily, so this is exactly my type of build here. Um, that being said, we're now going over to Intelligence. As I said, I wanted to have it a little bit more higher than I usually have. I didn't really feel the need to max it out to 14, to be honest. Uh, for the simple reason that 
there wasn't really anything to use here necessarily. I mean, obviously, scrapper is always a nice thing, especially if you rely on ammo source that um, needs plastic. One of the most efficient ways to gain plastic in my eyes is just to scrap laser rifles from super mutants. So, yeah, you can just go over to 15 and gel intelligence and use scrapper on top of all of that, but let's just talk about the perks we actually have. Um, very obvious contender here was batteries included. Obviously, we're carrying energy ammo and we have not, uh, we don't have a lot of carry weight, so batteries included was a must have for me. Then we do have Gunsmith, as I said, it's a very convenient perk, you can always live without it. Uh, it just makes it so that our weapons don't, don't break that fast, especially on this weapon where there's not a single modification or anything where you use Gunsmith for it. If you need a perk, it's something like Science or Science Master I even think. Um, but yeah, it's just so our weapon doesn't break so fast, and while I said that the condition of the weapon is pretty solid, it's not one of those weapons that breaks very fast. I still really like to enjoy Gunsmith and after all I wanted to have high intelligence to begin with so it was a perfect fit here. Then we do a first aid, I briefly touched upon it with the combination of Field Surgeon, that's a very nice thing to have in my eyes. And lastly we do have Nerd Rage and this is something that people often don't really understand if you're not running a dedicated low health build why you run nerd rage i personally like it especially on flimsy characters because it gives you in a in the heat of battle it gives you a little bit of a visual indication when it's time to use your stim pack um obviously this isn't too important when it comes to uh, when you have an auto stim piece or something but even then it just gives you more time to react um, to a threat and use the stim pack and in combination with field surgeon and first aid this really can save your your ass really often in fights when you actually get detected which obviously you shouldn't be anyways uh, not too often at least but yeah if you get hit from stray bullets or so this can make the difference between being killed instantly and having enough time to use your stim pack that's why it's here pretty straightforward then we come to intelligence uh, sorry agility and this is by far the most interesting stat whenever it comes to gunslingers. There is a lot of compromise to be had here and on this occasion I wanted to have the gunslinger perks maxed out just because nowadays the weapon performs well and I really wanted to see it in peak efficiency um, which I know is a, is a big statement because obviously peak efficiency would mean go for a bloody build and, and so on but you get the point here. So I wanted to have all the Gunslinger perks maxed out and on top of that we have a stealth build so I wanted to have at least covered operative and escape artist. These are like no-brainers when it comes to stealth build. The only wiggle room you do have in my eyes is sneak because if you have such high agility, um, if you on top of that have chameleon armor and so on, you can actually get away without using sneak especially since you can keep your range relatively easily. I still like or enjoy to have sneak anyways just because it is yet a little bit more of a boost but on this occasion the points were only enough for sneak rank 2 but that's perfectly fine in my eyes so yeah that, that this is the combination I went with now where's the compromise I'm talking about and that's obviously um, we do use a complete uh, vet build so we rely heavily on action points and we don't have room here for Action Boy. Now another perk that usually is always a good pick is Adrenaline. Now this is the first one to ditch when it comes to Gunslingers just because yeah, your main damage stat lies in, uh, sorry, your main damage perks lie within Agility so they have always priority over Adrenaline obviously. And lastly one perk I would really have liked to use but didn't really miss, miss too much ultimately anyways was Gun Fu. Uh, at least rank 1 I always like to have on my vets characters just because it's convenient. But I actually, as I said, didn't really miss it at any times during the video. It just, where it is a little bit more tedious it when, is when it when you're clearing a room full of ghouls, for example, then Gunfu really comes in handy. I'm not even talking about the damage boost, I'm really just talking about the actual menu, uh, sorry, automatic swip between enemies when they die. But anyways, long story short, this is the combination I went with, maxing out the Gunslinger perks, 
maxing out covered operative for extra sneak attack damage. A little bit of escape artist just because that's probably the most important perk when it comes to stealth anyways. And lastly, all that was left was two points and those I pumped into sneak. And that means we're now at our last stat, which is luck. We do have Grim Reaper Sprint, better criticals and critical savvy. Um, a combination I like to call the holy trinity of vets builds when it comes to luck, just because if you can't decide what to go for, these are never a bad pick. Now, better criticals is probably the most obvious here. If you go for a vets critical build, uh, obviously your vets criticals doing more damage is a very straightforward perk to take, I would say. Um, then we do have Critical Savvy, and the reason it's here, it's in, with very few exceptions, like shotguns, for example. Critical Savvy is always the most efficient bang for your buck when it comes to refreshing your critical meter. Just because, yeah, only consuming 55% of your critical meter means that with 15 luck, you do get a critical within two shots. Getting more than that requires a lot of investment. I have my builds where I use the uh, Vets Critical Meter filling faster legendary effect on weapons. At that point, 23 luck in combination with the effect and Critical Savvy are enough to get a crit on every second shot. And other than that, if you not want to use that legendary effect, you can use a low health build or certain buffs to get your luck up to 33, I think it is, or 34. I'm pretty sure it's 33 though. And at that point, it's enough luck so that with Critical Savvy, you only need one shot to refill your Critical Meter again. But anyways, usually Critical Savvy, most bang for your buck um, compared to stuff like Fall Leaf Clover or Psychopath or so on. Um, the reason I said most of the times is when it comes to shotguns, it can actually be more efficient to use Fall Leaf Clover or so on. But that's you'll see that when I'm making a shotgun build, basically. Um, and lastly, Grim Reaper Sprint. It's just a net positive. It will, on every single time, uh, every single time you use a vet's character, there will be situations where Grim Reaper Sprint just makes it so you instantly refresh your action points after a kill, and you can just go on and not have to rely on your AP refresh. Even if you have maxed out your uh, action point refresh rate, it's still we're talking about two seconds, one and a half, two seconds, and. Yeah, it's still nice to just not have to wait these two seconds. Not to speak about this character where we actually talk about probably more like five to six seconds for a full action point refresh. So even though since you are in stealth, you do have the time and it's not like game breaking or so to have to wait for your action points to refresh, it makes the game more fluent and actually more fun. Uh, waiting is never fun. So therefore, Grim Reaper Sprint is there. That being said, Another perk we just had to use was Starch Jeans, it's always there, we want to keep our mutations, not get any new ones. Now I do have one or two very specific characters where I made mutated characters without Starch Jeans, or just made characters with no mutations whatsoever on purpose, but these are very specific instances. Other than that, you probably always want to use Starch Jeans. And lastly, we do have Bloody Mess here, which is maxed out. It isn't the biggest boost in the world, but it's still a little bit, and at least in rank 1 I wanted to have for the simple reason that, yeah, you can make these gory explosions, which is always fun. So, hit or miss, you don't really need it, but uh, I wanted to have luck at 15 for the simple reason that, yeah, we can get our bad uh, crits within two shots, and that's it. Now, if you are really, really eagle-eyed, you will notice that the stats in luck don't add up exactly. We are using 14 perk points in a stat that has 15. Um, the reason is I would have to wait for another level up to fill that point. And I wanted to use Curator or anything, so yeah, feel free to use whatever you like there. And that all being said, the only thing that's left to do for us is taking a look at our legendary perks. And on this occasion, they are actually not too crazy. Uh, we do have Agility, Intelligence, and Luck maxed out. Then we do have what rats maxed out. We have Master Infiltrator because there is a Zedon on the picture and we're making a Zedon character and I'm not going to discuss why that is a no-brainer for me. And lastly, we do a follow-through, giving us on paper 40% more damage for the t uh, for 10 seconds after attacking an enemy 
in ranged sneak attacks, which we always do, so it should be very great, but as I said during the video, it seemed like this doesn't work together with the alien blaster. I'm not quite sure if it's bugged in general at the moment, or if it's something, it has something to do with the alien blaster, but as I said, I wanted to still have it included here, because it should be a bug and should be resolved, maybe it's a one-time thing for me, but yeah, ultimately follow through would be a great benefit, and chances are you're not going to only use the alien blaster, so it will be effective on a stealth ranged character. And yeah, that was a long story here. I hope you enjoyed the video guys, I certainly did. Uh, one of my favorite builds in quite a while, just because it was so satisfying that finally it happened. And yeah, keep an eye out for the other videos, because in the next few days we will see more, especially the alien disintegrator and the alien, how's it called, clubby sticky. I will learn the name by the time we make a video about it, I'm sure, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time. Bye.